Well, hello, my name is Christopher Scott, and I serve as a small groups pastor at a local church. And in this video, I'm going to teach you how to use the Warren Wearsby Bible Study Guide uh, for the books of First and Second Thessalonians in your small group study. So as I start these videos out, I'd like to remind you uh, that this is a how-to guide on how to use this Bible study to study the Bible, right? So it's easy sometimes for people to misunderstand. Uh, you're doing a, you know, a study of a book. Well, yes, we are studying a book. It's called the Bible. This is just simply a tool that has some good commentary and some good questions that guide your study of the Bible. So really, this is a video about how to do a Bible study through the books of First and Second Thessalonians using this as a tool and as a guide for you. So in this video, I want to talk to you about a few things. A few different sections I'm going to cover in this video. One, how do you prepare to facilitate a small group Bible study guide? So how do you prepare and get ready to do that? And then second, what does your group look like? How do you format your small group? What are the elements of your small group? And then third, I'm going to give you some facilitator tips for doing the study and you know guiding the discussion and moving the discussion along. So first, I want to talk to you about how do you prepare to facilitate a small group Bible study. The first thing you want to do is pray. You're going to want to pray for your people in your group. You're going to want to pray for what you're going to talk about, what's going on in their lives, things that they're working through, things like that. So pray that God would open up your heart to be able to serve them, but also pray for the people in your group that their hearts would be open. So that's the first step is you want to pray. Second, you want to read the passage assigned a few times for that week. Um, so you want to you know, get a feel for the passage, what's going on. But before you even start the study, I suggest you read the book of the Bible a couple times through. So read uh, 1 Thessalonians. It's five chapters. Just read it on your own a couple times. Get a good idea of the whole message of the book and what it's talking about. And then each week as you're going through a specific passage in the books, you want to read that passage a few times quickly, get a feel for it, and be ready for it. Okay? So first pray. Second, read the passage several times to get a feel for it. Uh, third, you want to study the passage. And I, I like using the Wearsby Bible Study Guides because they come with a commentary um, written by Warren Wearsby that goes further in depth into the interpretation of the passages, gives some good application ideas and things like that. Or you can use a good study Bible is a great resource too, or there's other good commentaries out there as well. So you want to first pray, second, read the scripture, Third, start to study. And then fourth, you want to take your time and answer the questions in this Bible study guide and go ahead and write them out. Don't worry about proper grammar. Don't worry about punctuation or anything like that. Just do your best to get your thoughts out and down on paper, okay? So that's how you prepare to facilitate a small group Bible study. You pray, you read the passage, you read the whole book first and then those individual passages each week. You study with a good study Bible or a commentary to get a feel for the what's going on in interpretation and things like that. And then you go ahead and write out your own answers to the questions. But how do you format your small group? That's the next section I want to share with you. How do you format the necessary elements of your small group? In our churches, I usually recommend the groups to have three elements of their small group. They do in the exact same order each and every week, three elements, and then have two other elements they can put at the beginning or the end of their group based on their preference, right? So those three elements are the unifying question, reading the passage, and then answering the questions together. Okay, so the unifying question. What is the unifying question? This is something we encourage our groups to do, is to start out their small group Bible study by asking what we call the unifying question, which is, what did you all learn from the message at church over the weekend? What did you take away from it? What stood out to you? What were you confused by? And it's a way to get people to talk about the message at church over the weekend, right? And it helps to unify our church, that's why we call it the unifying question, to get everybody on the same page about what was going on at the church services over the weekend. And there's a few reasons why we want to do that unifying question at the beginning of each small group. Number one, we always want our small groups to complement what is happening at church over the weekend. We never want them to replace people attending church. Sometimes it's easy for people to get in a small group and they love their small group so much they feel like that's their church and they don't need to be part of a larger gathering of Christians on the weekend. They just have the four or five people in their small group and they're good. But our church, we really want people to be celebrating at church over the weekend with worship, with good Bible teaching, with fellowship, serving others and things like that. 
and we also want them to be in a small group. So it's kind of both idea. And so you do the unifying question to remind people about the good things going on at church over the weekend. Second, the unifying question helps people to remember what they learned over the weekend, okay? Because if your group meets on a Tuesday or Wednesday, they might have forgot what they learned. And then third reason we do the unifying question is because it it helps people remember what they're supposed to be applying to their lives based on what they learned, okay? So there might be a good application the pastor gave in the message, and that unifying question reminds them, hey, I needed to do this this week, just like pastor said, okay? So the first element of your small group is to do the unifying question. Second, you want to read through the Bible text for that lesson. Sometimes this is easy to skip, thinking, oh, everybody already read it on their own. Go ahead and just read through the passage in the group, just, uh, just as it's assigned. So for this study guide, lesson three is on Thessalonians chapter 3. So start out the lesson by just reading all of chapter 3. You don't want to call on somebody that's brand new to your group. Only ask people to read that are a good reader and that like to read. Okay, don't just you know pick people randomly. Only let people read that are good readers and that like to read, um, and, and preferably someone that brings a paper Bible as well. Okay, then lastly, you want to go through the discussion guide in the group. Just go a question by question and ask those questions and work through them. Uh, if you come to questions that require uh, rereading a passage, go ahead and reread that scripture. So for example, lesson four is on 1 Thessalonians chapter four. But when you come to question five, it says review 1 Thessalonians 4, 9 through 10. So go ahead and reread 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. You already read the passage earlier, but go ahead and reread it as you go through the discussion guide, okay? So those are the three elements each small group should do in order. The unifying question, read the passage for that lesson, and then work through the discussion guide questions. And there's two additional elements each small group can do, either at the beginning or at the end. One is prayer requests, and I got a video that I'll put up there about how to organize prayer requests in your small group. And then also is snacks, and I got another video I'll put up there about how you can organize snacks in your small group and what that looks like. Uh, for me, I like to keep snacks until the end of a small group if possible, because as you're, you're studying the Bible, you're talking about it, things are going on. Sometimes if people are eating or getting up to go get more food or they're spilling their water in the middle of the discussion, it can be distracting for you as a facilitator and others. So try to keep snacks towards the end of the meeting or at the beginning if possible. So, But again, I got a video up there that will show you how to do that. So that's how you want to format your small group, okay? Unifying question, read the passage, go through the questions, and then before that or after that, you can do prayer and snacks, whichever order you wanna go in. Just try to be consistent in what you choose and do it in a consistent manner each and every week. So, you know how to prepare for a small group. You know the necessary elements for the small group. This third section I wanna to talk to you about is how do you facilitate the Bible study discussion, right? So what does that look like? These are some tips I wanna give you in no particular order, really. I'm just gonna go through some really important principles for facilitating a Bible study, specifically related to these Wearsby Bible study guides, okay? So first, you wanna facilitate in light of the main message of the book of the Bible, okay? You wanna facilitate in light of the main message of the book of the Bible. What do I mean by that? Earlier I talked about how you want to read the entire book to get a feel for its main message um, a few times, get a feel for that main message of the whole book, but then you're going to go through your study guide and it's going to take you to specific passages and specific verses and questions related to those verses. But sometimes you're going to need to use um, the main message of the book to help you guide those questions. So for example, Lesson five, question seven, it says, review 1 Thessalonians 5, 9 through 11. Question is, why do believers disagree on the matter of the tribulation? What is important for us to understand about the future events? What are the implications for believers if the church is raptured to heaven prior to the tribulation period? What are the implications if the tribulation occurs first? That's a good question. Um, but some people might say, well, this, you know, these little verses about the tribulation and this question, I don't really care about that, right? It's just going to work itself out. And what does it matter? But if you have read the entire book of 1 Thessalonians, you know that there was a lot of confusion going on and laziness that was starting to occur because of 
people's belief about the end times and because of their um, confusion about the rapture, right? So while this question here might be like, oh, it doesn't really matter, if you have a good feel for the whole message of the book, you know, this is the reason Paul even wrote the first letter to Thessalonians. So that's the first tip I want to give you. Facilitate each question, each verse, in light of the main message of the book. Keep that main message in the book. And one of the reasons I love these Wearsby commentaries is on the first couple pages, Wearsby gives you, let's see here, he'll give you the theme of the book, he'll give you a key verse of the book, and then he gives you a really great, simple outline of the book that pretty much tells you what the main message is. So you're going to facilitate the entire discussion in light of that key theme, that key verse, and that outline of the book, okay? A second tip for facilitating a Bible study using these Wearsby guides is pacing your study. Uh, each There's eight lessons in here with a ninth bonus lesson you want to do at the end, but eight lessons really, and each lesson has 15 questions. So when you're pacing your study, first of all, you want to communicate with your group each and every week about what lesson you're in, what questions you're going to cover, and what passage of scripture they should be reading before coming to the group, right? And this shouldn't be you in your group. It should be someone else in your Bible study group um, that is keeping track of this and that is reminding everybody because you want to encourage your group to work through the lessons before coming to the Bible study. And I got a video up there I'll give you um, about what that looks like to to work through the lesson and how you want to encourage your group, okay? And as you pace your group through these lessons, there's four different ways you can work through each lesson. Like I told you, there's eight lessons in each in this study guide here, eight lessons, and then each lesson has 15 questions, okay? And that's a lot of material to get through. So there's really four different ways you can work through those 15 questions. One is you can just start and stop each lesson based on the length of time. You say we have 50 minutes for discussion. You make it through four questions one week. That's great. You make it through eight the next week. That's okay too. It doesn't really matter. So that's one option. You just start and stop based on the time that you have available. Another idea is you do one week per lesson. That's a lot to cover um, unless you got a good chunk of time or only really have three or four people in your group. Another idea is you can do half of a lesson each week. You do questions one through seven one week, then questions eight through 15 the next week. Or you say, we're going to do the odd questions this week and then the even questions the next week. That's another idea. Uh, the way that I'm doing it uh, right now in our small group is we do three weeks per lesson. We do questions one through five one week, six through 10 the next week, and then 11 through 15 the next week. That's because of the Sunday school class that I facilitate. It's only an hour long. Um, so it's pretty tight window to get material in there. It meets 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., okay? And then also, there's a bonus lesson at the end of these study guides I encourage you to do because it helps people review the entire uh, book of the Bible they've just studied. In this case, 1 Thessalonians and 2 Thessalonians. It helps them review what they've learned, how they've been applying what they're learning, and how their life is changing as a result of the study. So don't skip those. Be sure to do those, okay? So... That's what working through the material looks like. And like I told you, there's 15 questions in each lesson. Now I want to give you some tips about how that's formatted, right? So this will give you a little feel for the formatting of the Wearsby Bible Study Guides. Each lesson has five sections. And this seems complicated as I'm describing it to you, but once you pick up the guide, it's pretty straightforward, okay? But there's five sections part as part of each lesson, okay? There's the getting started going deeper, looking inward, going forward, and seeking help sections, okay? And those five sections are really basic. It's the basic inductive Bible study process, okay? The getting started is the observation questions. That's questions one and two, getting started. It's just basic observations about that passage, what stands out to people. Then questions three through 10 are the going deeper sections, and that is interpretation. What does the text mean? Wearsby will give you some commentary in here. He'll take you to some other passages of scripture to read that and help you interpret what's going on. Okay, those are questions three through 10 going deeper. Then questions 11, 12, and 13 are looking inward and it's starting to be application. What do I do, right? And so it's looking inward, helps people internalize and process what they are learning in their own Christian lives. 
And then the fourth section going forward, question 14 is the most important one. This is application as well, where Wearsby gets everybody to do something as a result of what they are learning, getting them to do something as a result of what they are doing. And then the last question, question 15, is also application. It's seeking help where you write out a prayer to the Holy Spirit asking him to help you apply it. So that's how it's formatted. Basic uh, Bible study inductive process, getting started with observations, going deeper with interpretations, and then looking inward and going forward or uh, application-based and seeking help, okay? So another facilitator tip I wanna give you related to these guys guides is facilitate don't teach right facilitate don't teach remember that you are a you're not a teacher or preacher you're not giving a sermon you're facilitating a discussion right but you do your best to get everybody involved in the discussion you want them reading this and talking about it together in their group right and to get them in there not to be teaching them the material so remember facilitate don't teach Another tip is remember that application is more important than completion, okay? Application is more important than completion. What do I mean by that? Like I said, there's 15 questions in each lesson. That's a lot of material to get through. If you don't make it through all the material or you don't make it as far as you thought, as long as the group's staying on topic and they're applying what they're learning to their lives, that's what you are shooting for. Application is more important than completing each lesson okay and then another facilitator tip you with that you want to follow up with people based on their past commitments and past things they say so maybe they're doing a lesson about um, in the guides are doing a lesson that says and this person says I'm gonna do this based on what we're talking about the next week in a gentle loving kind supportive encouraging way you want to ask them hey last week you said you're gonna do this how did that go, right? You're gonna ask them and follow up with that and help people apply what they are learning to their lives. Lastly, the last tip, um, when, at our church, we usually ask people to contribute $10 to cover the cost of these study guides. So if that's something in your group you can do, uh, let people know up front, try to collect that money. It helps cover the cost of the study guides. And I recommend that's something you do um, for yourself or for your church, however you're purchasing those as a way to cover the cost. Because when people invest in something, they're going to get more out of it, right? And so, and if someone does buy a guide and maybe they show up to your group and they forget it one week, you make sure you can loan them an extra one, but make sure you get that back. Don't just keep giving them another one and another one um, that they need to, you know, kind of be somewhat responsible and actually buy it, keep it, use it, and bring it, okay? It's kind of part of the basics of being a Christian is being good stewards of the things we have in our money. So, I hope this has been a helpful video for you, a little bit long, about how to use these Wearsby Bible study guides. I love them. They're great resources. A lot of our groups at our church use them. I'm going to put links to the Bible study guide and to the commentary down there below. Um, they are affiliate links, so I do get a small commission if someone purchases something from Amazon, just so you know. Or you can get them at your local bookstore. They can get them from David C. Cook or a distributor, possibly. Um, they're easily accessible. So... I hope this video was helpful for you. Uh, in these videos about how to use the Wearsby Bible Study Guides, I usually like to give you an introduction to each book of the Bible. In this case, there's two books, so I'm going to put the link down there in the description. I, I did a five-minute introduction video to 1 Thessalonians and a five-minute introduction video to 2 Thessalonians. I recommend you watch those as well. It'll help give you a feel for the overview of the book and what's going on and things like that. So, I hope I've, I'm grateful that you watched. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. If you want to subscribe and get updates on future videos, I got some of the, that up there. If you want to learn to use uh, more of these Wearsby Bible study guides, I got those videos over there. If you want some more facilitator tips, I got those over there. And then some Bible study guidelines and ideas in a list over there. Thanks for watching, and I hope to catch you again soon in another video.